More and more outbreaks of measles are being reported in Canada and the United States. The resurgence of this disease, once thought defeated, has physicians and public health authorities worried. Now fingers are being pointed at the anti-vaccination movement that is mainly fueled by celebrities and people without scientific background who are perpetuating myths, says Dr. Brian Rotenberg. He worries that scientific evidence is being drowned out by celebrities. I think what happened with vaccination in particular is that a doctor named Andrew Wakefield published a very unfortunate study published in a major, major journal called The Lancet, where this doctor, who is actually a gastroenterologist with no background really in vaccination, showed that there is a small incidence of autism being side effect of the MMR vaccination. And although this was a very small study, it was poorly done, and I think this was a catalyst for people who had had some kind of fear to suddenly have an outlet for their fear, and it exploded from there. Eventually, the paper and the doctor were discredited, but it is still being used by anti-vaccine proponents. But unfortunately, as the myth persisted and grew, because there's always a willing audience out there to listen to things that are what are called a confirmation bias, whereas an information will confirm our own pre-existing thoughts on a topic. Rather than looking for contradictory information, if we feel something as human beings and we find evidence that supports it, we like to listen to that and preference anything else. And I think in vaccination, that's where this came from. One celebrity in particular, Jenny McCarthy, was no scientist scientific background has convinced many parents to forego vaccination. Dr. Rotenberg worries that scientific evidence is being drowned out. I think that more than anybody else, she has single-handedly severely damaged the vaccination background because of her strident tone, but more importantly because she's a well-known person who has a voice in the media. We live in an era where social media and celebrities' voices carry much more weight than the rational thinking of science. People, for whatever reason nowadays, do not want to believe in science. They would rather trust people who have no scientific background, but who speak very well and who are well-known celebrities. This is why Dr. Rotenberg and other physicians have suggested enlisting the help of a celebrity celebrity to publicize the benefits of vaccination. You're talking not so much science at that point about religion and you're talking about faith versus facts and it is very difficult to convince somebody that they need to change their mind but if we can enlist somebody who uh, is trusted by the public to get this message out there that could be a very helpful thing. Although scientific evidence has proven that side effects of vaccination are minimal some remain skeptical. Dr. Rotenberg explains why physicians need to do a better job at explaining the risks and benefits of vaccination. I would show them the fact that there's a strong link between not vaccinating and getting these horrible diseases, doing nothing, not keeping your child safe because they'll be at a much higher risk to get this disease. I think it's a very, very important to distinguish what is necessary information to provide versus what is not. So if I was giving a vaccination, I would provide my patients with the risks of the vaccination, which I'd talk to them about the benefits, which are, of course, you wouldn't get the measles. And I would talk to them about the alternatives. Now, the reality is that there is no alternative to vaccination except not getting it. There's no homeopathic or pill you can take. However, Dr. Rotenberg would not include autism as a risk of vaccination when speaking to parents. Now, if a patient asks, doctor, what are your thoughts on autism and vaccination? At that point, I think it's reasonable to bring it up. But otherwise, I think if we bring it up preemptively, you're just actually reinforcing a confirmation bias in the patient's mind. He worries that other diseases like rubella, mumps, and even polio might make a comeback. When you don't see how horrific these diseases can be, how massively contagious they are, how they can be a total scourge of society, you tend to say, well, what's the big deal? It's just a rash. Nobody in the current generation have probably seen a case of measles, so it's hard to believe that these kind of things existed, just like polio, whooping cough, rubella, we just don't see them anymore. And we don't see them because of the power of vaccination in eradicating these disorders. And if more and more parents choose to not vaccinate their children, public health authorities might have to act more decisively, like not allowing unvaccinated children to attend school. I would be very much in support of that because the problem is there could be other kids at the school who want to be vaccinated but are sick children and they could be very young children and through no fault of their own, they're going to be exposed to somebody who may be indeed be a measles carrier. And the thing with measles is that its transmissibility rate is probably close to 100%. And that one parent's decision to not vaccinate their children is putting all of the children at the school at risk. You don't want to get your child vaccinated. Ultimately, it's your decision, but then there are consequences, one of which is you can't go to a public school. For Evidence Network, I'm Melanie Holoboski.